Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, ladies and gentlemen, as you have seen with your own eyes, this session called by the President of the Security Council to deal with the so-called humanitarian dimension of the Syrian crisis became out of a sudden an occasion to say and to talk politically about the Syrian crisis. I mean by this that the way some ambassadors and ministers dealt with the humanitarian issue of the Syrian crisis has disclosed and unveiled the reality and the real intentions of their countries and their governments towards what's going on in Syria. They didn't speak about the humanitarian dimension. They rather focused, as you saw, on the political, on their own misinterpretation, political misinterpretation of the Syrian crisis. The proof, there are many proofs actually, but one of them is that, as I said in my statement, none of those ambassadors who took the floor, with the exception of one or two maybe, none of the countries represented in the council, whether they are Arab countries or Islamic countries or others, have donated even one dollar to the OCHA office to subsidize its response, a plan of response to deal with the humanitarian needs of the Syrian people. If they were really honest and sincere, they would have at least contributed, even symbolically speaking, with a couple hundred thousand dollars. But they didn't. They spent millions of dollars on smuggling weapons, on training terrorists, on harboring the terrorists on their own ground, in their own countries, by giving the, to the terrorists a ground to launch their military operations through the Syrian border with, with the neighboring countries. This is the first remark. The second remark is that those who took the floor and pretended that they were motivated by their feelings, urgent feelings to help the Syrian people, all of them focused in their speeches on the political sides of their minds, not on the humanitarian side. You have heard yourselves that some of them attacked the president of Syria himself. And they were strongly and highly undiplomatic in their approaches. And that also reflects what they do have, really, in the background of their minds. Third, all of them are associated to the bloodshed in my country. All of them have hidden agendas to destabilize Syria and to continue this bloodshed taking place in my country. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, we do have a humanitarian crisis. We are not negating this aspect of the crisis. And we need help and assistance from the so-called international community, if there is one but not under the form of undermining the sovereignty of Syria and its political independence. If they wanted to help the Syrian people in the humanitarian field, they should stop mingling in our interior affair, internal affairs and they should stop smuggling weapons and harboring the terrorists and using the media as a weapon 
of terrorizing everybody in this public opinion. Helping Syria requires reading the map reasonably. And all those who took the floor and criticized Syria had shut down their embassies in Damascus and they have no information whatsoever to provide them with the accurate information. All what they said is baseless, without any foundation, and not credible at all. Mr. Guterres said a few minutes before me that the most efficient way to help Syria would be to focus on the humanitarian needs inside Syria. Inside Syria. While some of my distinguished colleagues who came today to the Security Council came either under the instigation of somebody to fill the room with the new faces or they came to beg for some money under the pretext, the false pretext that they would like to help the Syrian people. You don't help the Syrian people this way. You don't help stopping the refugees flux from Syria this way. You help, you help stopping the, ref, the flux of the refugees coming from Syria across the border by not inciting violence inside Syria, by not helping the terrorists attacking the infrastructure in the country, attacking hospitals and schools, killing innocent peoples, attacking army and police officers. You do not help the Syrian people by giving haven, refuge to the terrorists in some of the neighboring countries of Syria. When we talked about this ship coming from Libya with weapons to be smuggled across the Lebanese-Syrian border, that was a reality, a fact. Nobody denied the fact. It was proven and it was acknowledged and recognized by the Lebanese minister and by the Lebanese government. We don't have a problem with the Lebanese government. We don't have any problem with the Lebanese government. We have a problem with the political parties in Lebanon who are smuggling weapons through the border in an irresponsible way. This ship was followed by seven other ships. And we know, we know very well the identity of the senders. We know it very well. So when we raised this issue, it wasn't about criticizing the Lebanese government. It was about drawing the attention of the Lebanese government that enough is enough. We have up to the neck with the issue of smuggling weapons through the border. The same issue applies to the Turkey government, Turkish government. Turkey hosts camps of training of terrorists. Turkey allows terrorist groups to undertake military operations through the border with Syria and guarantees to them a safe return to inside Turkey. So we do have a problem with the Turkish government, not with the Turkish people. Again, I'm in your hands. I would uh, uh, urge him to establish whatever he wants within Turkey itself. أنا أشرت في بياني في جلسة المجلس إلى وجود جدول معي. جدول يضم 107 أسماء من الإرهابيين الكثير منهم لبناني 
والكثير منهم كما قلت من جنسيات أخرى وسترون هذه الوثيقة قريبا ستوزع نحن نتحدث عن وقائع هناك إرهابيون يأتون من تركيا يأتون من لبنان يأتون من السعودية من الأمارات من الكويت معظمهم من تونس وليبيا هناك فلسطينيون هناك أوروبيون هناك واحد أسترالي هناك أفغان هذه ليست أوهام وخيالات هذه حقائق مرصودة بالأسماء والهويات والجنسيات سفينة الأطفال الاثنين لم تكن وهما والسبع سفن الأخرى ليست وهما وتهريب الأسلحة عبر البر ليس وهما والجرائد اللبنانية حافلة بالمقالات والتحقيقات حول هذا الموضوع والصحف الأوروبية أجرت لقاءات مع المهربين في لبنان في منطقة وادي خالد في الشمال وفي الوسط وهناك أسماء يتم تردادها لمهربي الأسلحة في الصحافة الأوروبية والأمريكية إذا كان كل هذا وهم وخطأ فما هو الواقع في الموضوع فما هي الحقيقة يس I said in my in my statement that I called actually in my statement upon all governments concerned to let the Syrian refugees go back to their homeland. At least those who would like to return, let them go back to where they came from. But of course, this is a kind of excellent business for some countries to manipulate this issue and to make money out of it. Some people have this hobby, dirty hobby, of making business with the suffering and the blood of the Syrian people, including the suffering and the blood of the refugees. It's a stock market. It's a bloody stock market. This is why I called in my statement on the governments of the neighboring countries of Syria to let our people go back, at least those who would like to return. Because, I, I, let me give you this just justification. Why people are fleeing? They are fleeing because the terrorists use the civilians as a human shields. They assassinate people within the villages and the towns. Then the army comes. The army pursues them. Then they run away. And the civilians are caught in between. So when you come and you undertake your terrorist activities in civilians areas, that means you, have, you are participating and contributing, directly speaking, towards uh, uh, impo uh, asking, I mean, Im imposing the, the departure uh, uh, on the civilian people from their, from their towns and villages. So it's, it's true what you are saying. And then with regard to the, the, the Germany, we complained a year ago about the, the German Marines in the Mediterranean supposedly in charge of protecting Lebanon, supposedly. The German ships have allowed the Libyan ship to cross the water and to reach the Lebanese port of Tripoli. Tripoli. Then there are questions of Marx with regard how genuine the German rhetorics are. are. Germany is involved through its own